Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, I'll tell you about a new traversal method that is the depth first search algorithm, right? So in short, it is also sometimes known as the DFS algorithm. So let us see what happens in this DFS algorithm. Now this algorithm is another algorithm to construct a spanning tree. And it was first investigated by the French mathematician Charles Pierre Trabox. What does the algorithm say? The algorithm says that start from any vertex CV which belongs to the vertex Z, then advance to a new adjacent vertex and further on to a new adjacent vertex and repeat this above process until we are back to the source vertex V with no new adjacent vertex. Right? So here, what we have to do is if any vertex is given to us to start from, we will start from that vertex. Otherwise, we can start from any vertex that is given in that graph, right? And then we have to advance to a new adjacent vertex and we have to repeat the process until all the vertices have been covered and we have to backtrack to the first vertex from where we have started. So let us apply this into a problem and see what type of spanning tree we will get in this part, right? So this is a graph given to us and we will find out the DFS, the depth first search. By applying the DFS algorithm, let us find out the spanning tree. So here, what we are going to do, we are going to use a method called stack method. So let's make up the stack first. The stack is nothing but it is an empty vessel. So we will be pouring on the vertices that we will be covering up here. So see. Nothing is given from where we have to start. It's our choice. We can start from any one of the six vertices. But if it is given that we have to start from vertex 1, then we need to start from vertex 1. Right? So let us assume that we are given that we have to start from vertex 1. Right? So what we will do? We will write down our answer here. The answer that we get for our spanning tree. And we will, whatever vertices we are going to cover up, we will put those vertices back in this vessel, right? So, we will make a first stack. So, in the first stack, the first vertex 1 is there. So, from 1, just check who are the adjacent vertices to vertex 1. So, you can see either we have 2 or we have 5. So, it's your choice. We have to advance to a new adjacent vertex. So here you can see that either we can advance to 2 or we can advance to 5. So let us advance to vertex 2. Right? So let us advance to vertex 2. So now we will reach vertex 2. So in our answer we started from vertex 1 and now we are at vertex 2. And now let us put 2 in this stack and let us close it up. Right? Now after reaching 2, let us see that where or who are its adjacent vertices. So we can see that 5, 6 and 3 are its adjacent vertices. So it's your choice. You can either move to 5, you can move to 6 or you can move to 3. So let us move to vertex 3. Right? So when we move to vertex 3, so now we will put 3 in the stack and in our answer we will write the vertex. Right. Now from vertex 3 you can see that only vertex 4 is the adjacent vertex. So let us move to vertex 4 and let us put vertex 4 in our answer and let us put vertex 4 in the stack also. Right. Now after reaching vertex 4 you can see that there is no new adjacent vertex left. Right. So when this is the case that new, no new adjacent vertex is left, we will backtrack the path. Right? How will I backtrack the path? In the stack, you can see that 4 was present where we had reached last. So we will remove this vertex from the stack. Right? So when we remove the vertex from the stack, so you can see that the next vertex that we are there is vertex 3. So we will backtrack to vertex 3 now. Right. So when we backtrack to vertex 3, let us see that two are the adjacent vertices left here that is not traced. So you can see that it had only one adjacent vertex that is 2 and it is already been traced. Right. 
So what we will do, we will remove 3 from the stack and we will backtrack the path. So we will move to vertex 2. Now from vertex 2, let us see that is there any untraveled vertex left from vertex 2. So you can see that it has two adjacent vertices that is vertex 6 and vertex 5. So either you can go to vertex 5 or you can go to vertex 6, a choice. So if I go to vertex 5, what will I do? I will read 5. In my answer, I will print 5. In my stack, I will write 5 over here. Right? Now from 5, let us see who are its searches in vertex. We have vertex 1 and we have vertex 6. But you can see that vertex 6 has not been traveled so far. But vertex 1 has been traveled. So only choice left is vertex 6 now. Right. So we will move to vertex 6. Now after moving to vertex 6, let's put this in the answer as well as in the stack also. Right. Now from vertex 6, we have to again see is there any untraveled path left, any untraveled vertex left. So you can see that the adjacent vertices to vertex 6 was vertex 2 only. Right. So it has already been traveled. So what we do? We traverse back, we backtrack. And when we backtrack, what we do? Let us remove 6 from the stack. And when we remove 6 from the stack, we can see that the next vertex in the pipeline is 5. So we will backtrack to 5. Right? When we backtrack to 5, let us see that is there any untraveled vertex left after vertex 5? And you can see that there is no untraveled vertex left. So again from the stack, let us remove vertex 5. And now we can see that we have vertex 2 in the pipeline. So let us backtrack to vertex 2. So we move on to vertex 2 like this. And now from vertex 2, just check. Is there any vertex left that is untraveled? And you can see that it is no vertexes left, right? So we will remove this 2 from the stack. And now we can see that the next vertex in pipeline is vertex 1. So again, you can see that none of the vertices is left untraveled. And you can backtrack this and we get vertex 1 from where we started. Right? So this becomes your spanning tree. 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. Right? And this will give us our answer. Right? I hope it is clear. Right? Okay. But it is not necessary that the spanning tree that we have got is a unique one because from 1 we had moved to vertex 2 but you can also move to vertex 5 also. Right? So this is one of the spanning tree that is obtained by the DFS method and it is not a unique one, right? So the uh, path that we will get, the spanning tree that we will get is 1 to 2, then we had moved to 3, then we had moved to 4. And from 4, if you remember, we back traveled to 3, then 3 to 2, and then from 2, we have moved on to 5, right? And then from 5, we had moved on to so this is your spanning tree that we have got from the Right? You might get some other spanning tree also if you travel from 1 to 5 and then if you choose some other path from 5 to the other vertex. Right? So you have to keep in mind that make a stack. Put that vertex, the ones you are traveling, to those vertices in that stack. And once you reach a dead end from where you cannot move further, you need to backtrack and see that is there any vortex that is untraced, right? And by this process, repeat this process until you reach back to the initial vortex from where you have started, right? So I hope you have understood the DFS method, the depth first search method. And this is one of the solutions that we have obtained after calculating the spanning tree, right? So thank you so much for listening to me and do subscribe my channel those who have not subscribed and if you like the video do hit the like button and believe in yourself and you will surely able to succeed in life. Thank you so much.